Well, thank you for this very long, kind introduction, and thank you for the opportunity to present our work. Uh, I'm going to talk about management of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease uh, during kidney transplantation. So the incidence of autosomal dominant, dominant polycystic kidney disease is about one in every thousand. The main manifestations are hypertension, cranial aneurysms, and renal dysfunction. About 50% of those patients will end up developing end-stage renal disease and will eventually require a form of renal replacement therapy. So the question becomes, among those patients, who are the patients that really require a native nephrectomy for their polycystic kidneys? So the main indications, the very common indications are pain, body disfigurement, cyst complications such as infections, bleeding, stones, malignancies, or suspicion of malignancy, and also some of the compression symptoms, whether it's early satiety, respiratory compromise, and then uh, lastly, making space for the new kidney to be transplanted. So the question is, is space really an issue? Is it very common to have those big kidneys that really affect the mechanical positioning of the new transplant? The answer is really, it's not, it's a very subjective thing. I think in most of the cases, you can actually push the kidney aside and have developed some space behind the kidney to put it in. And uh, in other cases, you can actually rupture some of the lower pole cysts and still be able to put the kidney in. So it's not really um, um, an absolute indication to take the kidney out. However, every once in a while, we see one of those patients who have massive kidneys with really no space inside. And this is, uh, I think, one of the biggest nephrectomies I was involved in. And this is the, uh, the same patient um, before and after the nephrectomy. And um, this is probably more than, was about 40 centimeter length of kidney. So this is not the usual kidney you would encounter day to day in the autosomal polycystic kidney disease. So the other question becomes, how many patients will actually need an nephrectomy? So this is an interesting observational study over seven years that looked, followed uh, different groups of autosomal down polycystic kidney disease patients. And um, the nephrectomy was being done, was done in 25 patients pre the transplant. Four patients had a simultaneous nephrectomy at the time of transplantation, and 21 patients had a transplant without a nephrectomy. And the take point from the study was they thought that 43% of those patients of group three, the patients who had only a transplant without a nephrectomy, went on to need a nephrectomy later on. Uh, it's a little bit of a big number, but this is the number reported in this um, study. Now, the great debate, the great question is, when should the nephrectomy be done? What is the optimum timing of the nephrectomy? Should it be done at the time of transplantation, a simultaneous bilateral nephrectomy at the time of transplantation? Should it be done pre-transplant? Should it be done post the kidney transplant? Or should we develop a mixed approach where you take one kidney during the transplantation and another kidney either pre or post? And if I can get a show of hands from the audience, how many people believe it should be done simultaneously with the transplant? Both? No one? So mixed approach, right? So how many patients believe it should be done before the transplant, both kidneys? Okay. And how many should be done after the transplant? None? Okay. And mixed approach, one with, one before or after? Okay. All right. So what are the pros and cons of each approach? And uh, so the, the pre-transplant, the pros is you avoid the transfer of the risk associated with the nephrectomy to the transplant itself. It definitely makes the transplantation procedure less morbid, and also it allows a laparoscopic approach for later removal of those kidneys. However, the disadvantage is it's not well suited for preemptive patients because you'll push them to need dialysis um, uh, earlier on. There's also, even for patients on dialysis, you lose some of the residual diuresis, which makes help, uh, helps management of the hyperkalemia and hypervolemia. There's also a potential risk of sensitization from the blood transfusion that might be needed. And of course, there's always this uh, point of view, make those patients be exposed to two procedures, two anesthesias, two risks, you're basically doubling the risk of surgery for those patients. And then uh, people who are pro-simultaneous nephrectomy with the transplant, they say it's a single procedure, it's very well suited for preemptive patients. And believe it or not, it's actually, if you ask patients, at least in my experience, most of the patients prefer to have a one-stop shopping experience just to get everything done in one time and be done with it. 
However, the cons, and this is Dr. Novik, who was um, one of the people who always believed that they should not go together. Transplant and nephrectomy should not be done at the same time. And he said, you're deviating from the regular transplant. Now the kidney is no longer extraperitoneal. It's an intraperitoneal organ. It's more liable for torsion. Urine leaks are no longer uh, isolated in the extraperitoneal space. There's more blood loss. There's a lot of fluid shifts, and renal hyperperfusion can happen. Basically, you're threatening the index surgery, which is the transplant. There is a lot of hospital, the hospital stays longer, obviously, in those patients as well. And then patients, people who believe that should be done in a post-transplant setting, um, the only complications associated with that is wound issues because the patients are already on immunosuppression and there are theoretical risk of injury to the transplant organ itself. And then there's the uh, mixed approach where you kind of divide the risk. You do one kidney either before or after the transplant and then one with the transplant. So is there data to support or make one of those approaches superior to the other. So for the stage team, the people who believe that the transplant and nephrectomy should not be done together, this is actually one of the studies that came out of the Cleveland Clinic. Um, it's a very, relatively a very small study, only 11 patients in the simultaneous arm and seven patients in the pre-transplant nephrectomy arm. And what they showed is actually a very high rate of complications in patients who had simultaneous nephrectomy and transplantation. About 60% of those patients required an additional surgical procedure, and they recommended against it. As I said, again, you can see the name of Dr. Novick as a, a last author on this paper. However, this is actually the paper that motivated me to look and to take a deeper look in our data because this, is, this, not, this definitely does not reflect our current practice and results, which I'm going to talk about. This is another paper, same thing. Um, 20 patients who had a simultaneous nephrectomy with a transplantation, very high complication rate, about 45%, and recommendation it might be safer to perform them sequentially not at the same time. Now, more recent data, this is a paper coming out of University of Maryland, uh, 20 cases of simultaneous nephrectomy and transplantation versus the matched cohort of patients who had a uh, transplantation and nephrectomy in separate occasions. And they reported a low complication rate this time, only two cases of wound adhesions and one liver laceration, one adrenal insufficiency, neither of that required actually an abortion of the surgery or threatened the transplant itself. And then another one also, um, same thing, 32 patients, and they reached out the same conclusion that having the nephrectomy and the transplant at the same time is safe. Now this is a little bit more of an interesting study because it took a different angle, it has a different take on the whole matter. This is also three groups, simultaneous nephrectomy, transplant alone versus stage bilateral nephrectomy. And the different take here, they reported the same graft outcomes, and as expected, the simultaneous nephrectomy had longer operative time and more blood loss, which is not a disadvantage on its own, it's just the price paid for having two procedures done uh, at the same time. Um, they also reported that seven out of the nine patients who had a transplantation alone needed a post-transplant bilateral nephrectomy, which is a little bit high. However, um, they did some satisfaction scores, and they thought that the satisfaction was highest in group one, who are the patients who had a simultaneous nephrectomy. And they also noted that when the patients who had a transplant alone and then went on to get a nephrectomy, when they were asked, would you have preferred doing that with the transplant? Most of them said yes. Uh, however, they were generally satisfied with the approach they had, but they would prefer having it with the transplant itself. So the mixed approach team, I don't want you to get lost in those many arrows. It's just um, a paper coming out from uh, University of Indiana. They compared two approaches. The first approach, which was transplant without a nephrectomy, followed by bilateral nephrectomy. And the other one is the mixed approach we talked about, which is transplant with a nephrectomy at the time of the, tra uh, with the ipsilateral nephrectomy only, followed by laparoscopic contralateral nephrectomy later on. And their argument is that the ipsilateral nephrectomy at the time of transplantation only added about 30 minutes to the transplantation itself. Um, and if you compare unilateral nephrectomy versus bilateral lab nephrectomy, it's much safer in their, in, their, um, in their data that unilateral nephrectomy is associated with a shorter operative time, less blood loss, less complications, and similar hospital stay. And therefore, they advocate for this mixed approach, taking one kidney with a transplant and another kidney either before or after. And this is another data, same uh, thing, 
143 patients transplant alone, 16 patients simultaneous ipsilateral nephrectomy, meaning only unilateral nephrectomy on the right side or whatever the side that they're putting the kidney in through an extended Gibson incision. And um, the outcomes was, of course, good. Similar hospital stay, graft function is fine, patient survival is fine. And of course, as expected, some longer operative times and more blood transfusion. And the conclusion is there's no need for preoperative ipsilateral nephrectomy. If needed, it can be done simultaneously um, at the time of surgery. Now, all of these debates and all of those different approaches is the thing that motivated me to look into our own data. This is by far, this is still unpublished data, but this is by far the largest cohort of patients that has been reported in literature. Um, this is 236 patients who needed um, a transplant for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease from 2005 to 2017. And we really wanted to look into the outcomes of different nephrectomy timings, as well as look into the effect of not doing a nephrectomy at all. And um, as I said, we started with 236 patients. We excluded 14 patients for having a simultaneous organ transplant, whether it was kidney, uh, with pank or heart or liver, which left us with a final cohort of 222 patients. Uh, simultaneous nephrectomy was performed in 107 patients, pre-transplant nephrectomy in 27, post-transplant in five patients, and 83 patients got uh, transplanted with no nephrectomy. So first I'm gonna talk about the staged nephrectomy on its own very briefly. These are the patients who had either a post-transplant or a pre-transplant nephrectomy. Um, just a description of our data. 73% were done in a pre-transplant setting 75% were bilateral, and uh, about a 50% were done in open approach, 50% were done uh, using a lap or hand assist approach. And the median time from nephrectomy to transplantation was about nine months. Uh, blood loss was about 300 cc's, hospital stays about six days, and operative time is about four hours. We had only one case of splenic injury in this uh, series of 37 patients, uh, post-operative complications, three patients developed ileus, two patients had cardiac events, and one case of chest infection. Now, the first comparison is between patients who had simultaneous nephrectomy and pre-transplant nephrectomy. This is just to show that both groups were comparable uh, in the demographics and clinical pre and the medical history. Uh, as far as the donor, we just noted that um, 75% of the page, 70 percent of the uh, simultaneous group had a living donor versus 48% um, uh, in the pre-transplant. And I'll talk about why this is well suited more for um, this setting, simultaneous nephrectomy and living transplantation go well together. As far as the operative data, as expected, simultaneous nephrectomy had more blood loss, operative time is longer, there's higher incidence of urethro-urethral anastomosis versus urethrovesical anastomosis. Post-operative data, the DGF, the delayed graft function, was higher in the pre-transplant nephrectomy, and this is not an actual data. This is just because more living donors existed in the simultaneous nephrectomy group. Uh, creatinine discharge, same thing, more living transplants, more living don donors led to a lower creatinine discharge. The more important thing is, at one year, the graft survival is basically the same. Whether you had a simultaneous nephrectomy, a pre-transplant nephrectomy, same graft survival. This is a slide that just reflect the change in our trends at the Cleveland Clinic. From 2005 to 2009, you can see about 65% of the cases were done in simultaneous fashion. Now, from 2014 to 2017, more than 90% um, are done in a simultaneous fashion. And I want to say this is actually driven more by the patient's preference more than anything else. Most of the patients we see prefer having everything done at one time. Um, the next thing we compared having no nephrectomy, transplant only, versus having to take any of the kidneys out. As expected, those patients who had no nephrectomy were older in age, had smaller kidney sizes. The surgery itself has less blood, less operative time, and same thing, less um, urethral anastomosis. And post-operative data, um, post-operative blood transfusion was less, and the hospital stay also was less. Now, again, the important thing is at 10 years, the graft survival is basically the same. The take home from this is whether you take those kidneys out or leave them in, this has no toll on the kidney function or the graft function itself. Um, this is some operative notes of how to perform the procedure. Uh, generally, generally speaking, we go through a midline incision. A Thompson retractor is a must. Um, I typically uh, prefer to start by the left side 
start by mobilizing the lower pole to make more space, higher the section, and more importantly, keep the adrenal gland dissection last because there's a very high incidence of injuring the adrenal gland. Um, pexing the kidney, which means fixing the kidney after the, the transplant is done to avoid any torsion. And um, this procedure is always associated with large fluid shifts, and typically you need aggressive fluid resuscitation from your anesthesia team when doing those simultaneous nephrectomy with transplant. And then uh, a wise thing is to postpone the irreversible portion of the donor nephrectomy if you're doing a living transplant till you're done with the kidney portion. So typically, both cases started at the same time, but we do not cut the ureter until we make sure that both kidneys are out safely and we're ready for the next, trend, uh, for then, for the next step and the patient is doing fine. So how to counsel patients? Uh, how to counsel autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease patients? Unfortunately, I showed a lot of different approaches, but I don't think there is one superior to another. It depends on many factors. So the first one is you need to explore the indications of nephrectomy with the patient in the pre-transplant setting. Secondly, you need to educate the patients about the data. They're out there, um, which I will talk about in more depth. And then it's important to determine whether the patient is on dialysis or preemptive. And another thing is the quality of the organ also makes a huge impact on your decision, whether it's a living, whether it's a deceased um, or a donor, whether it's a brain death or cardiac death donor. So this is just a simple algorithm that I usually use. First of all, you need to know whether there's an indication of nephrectomy or not. If there's no indication, then the, the information you need to relay to the patient is keeping your native kidney has no effect on your graft outcome. You can keep those kidneys, nothing's going to happen. There is a, a 40, about a 40% chance that you might need a native nephrectomy in the long term, and if that is needed, it's safe to do so then, and it should not pose any danger to your implanted kidney. And actually, having a transplant alone is the least morbid procedure out of all the different approaches. But what if the patient has an indication for a native nephrectomy? So the information is a little bit different. I would tell them that simultaneous nephrectomy is definitely associated with more blood loss, increase in operative time, and hospital stay. However, there's no effect on your graft outcome, and it definitely avoids a secondary procedure down the road. And if that's the case, then you need to determine whether this patient is on dialysis or preemptive. If the patient is on dialysis, I offer him usually simultaneous nephrectomy at the time of transplantation. However, the patient is preemptive, then you need to determine the organ quality. If it is a good organ, if it's a living or coming from a healthy uh, brain dead organ with a low KDPI, then I would still do a simultaneous nephrectomy at the time of transplantation. However, if it's a marginal kidney, a DCD kidney in a preemptive patient, then I would prefer doing the transplant alone and postponing the nephrectomy about six months. So in conclusion, I think uh, our data showed that simultaneous um, nephrectomy at the time of transplantation for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease is safe. Um, I believe that the timing decision is tailored, um, it's a tailored decision for every patient, uh, according to the different um, data points that we talked about. And then, more importantly, the absence of native nephrectomy or keeping those polycystic kidney disease is associated with less morbidity at the time of transplant and similar graft survival at long-term follow-up. However, there's always a chance that those patients might need a post-transplant nephrectomy uh, later on. Thank you.